spent in a miserable way. Wealth tax. 70% rates. Medicare for all, perspective interpretation of the news based on evidence, including data, as well as anticipating how events might unfold based on past events. It's still a year before the Iowa caucuses and already Democratic politicians are tripping over each other to frame the policy debate and demonstrate their progressive bona fides to party activists. Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez, the 29-year-old congresswoman from the Bronx and the media darling of the freshman class, opened the bidding by proposing a 70% tax rate on incomes above $10 million. In case any not to be outflanked, presidential candidate senior Elizabeth Warren met the chattering class was still chewing Warren's wealth tax when senior Kamala D. Her feeling left behind, the socialist senator from Vermont, Bernie Sanders, quickly weighed in with his plan to restore the inheritance tax to where it was in the 1970s 45% for estates valued at $3.5 million and rising to 77% for billionaires. Meanwhile, liberal backbenchers, flush from the Democratic takeover of the House, were busy dusting off ideas like debt-free college, Medicare for all and something called a Green New Deal, although nobody was quite sure yet exactly what that meant. Centrists, who dared to step forward to criticize these proposals, were immediately shouted down as morally compromised sellouts you all the more so if they happened to be baby boomer billionaires with presidential ambitions. The campaign to dis the outbreak of bold, fresh thinking and moral fervor on the Democratic left is certainly something to be celebrated. In the liberal mixture today, Kennedy's grandson, Republic. Joe Kennedy Mass. While we can applaud those who have launched this much needed public conversation about economic justice, however, that doesn't excuse their bullying efforts to banish thoughtful criticism or competing ideas. The more socialist countries of Northern Europe abandoned tax rates above 70% because they spawned countless schemes for tax avoidance. More significantly, yes, up to a point, a tax and transfer system that modestly redistributes income to those who most need it can be consistent with good public finance. But if those modest, we can also learn from experience with the wealth tax, which many European countries abandoned because of the difficulties in calculating the tax and the ease with which it is avoided. Nearly the same amount, no less flawed, is Warren's demand for worker representation on corporate boards. That may work well. The fundamental problem with American corporate governance is not the makeup of boards but the imperative imposed on them by Wall Street to maximize profits and share price. Reigning in the power, I am sympathetic with Harris' plan for what amounts to a negative income tax that would put an income floor under all Americans. You I recently proposed something similar myself. But to make such an I will be the first to acknowledge that ideas like the wealth tax or putting workers on boards are easier to understand and more apt to energize the political base than changing the tax treatment for unrealized capital gains or adjusting the fiduciary duties of corporate directors. But the reason, are, these days, what animates the fringes of both parties is the fantasy that they can win elections by throwing out bold, ideologically divisive proposals and then, once in office, using the stick of party discipline to run over the opposition and foist these policies on a still skeptical and badly divided public. In an era of winner, such the problem with making Medicare for all. Yes, if we, the problem with the progressive wing of the Democratic Party is not that its ideas are too bold or too radical you it is that it is too wedded to specific, highly symbolic policy prescriptions, too apt to confuse compromise for capitulation, too ready to demonize those who disagree and turn off those who are undecided. Wouldn't it be more effective, for example, to talk about every American being able to buy decent health insurance at a cost they can afford, irrespective of income or health condition? Or promise that, by framing the economic debate in terms of these widely supported aspirations, rather than a flawed set of policy litmus tests, Democrats could energize their base, unify their party and put Republicans on the defensive. Indeed, there is, the problem with our political debates is that they have become too much about means and not enough about ends, too much about economic values and too little about moral ones, 
too much about individual rights and not enough about collective responsibility.